Hello friends, welcome to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the core networking concepts in AWS. So basically, uh, I want to talk about AWS VPC service or virtual private cloud. All right, so let's start. So to explain you the concepts of VPC, I'm using a diagram in the first slide, which you all can relate to. Okay, so let's see this diagram. So suppose you are, uh, I mean, you have bought a piece of land inside a society or an apartment. Okay, as you can see in the diagram. So this is your uh, land or this is your plot, which you have bought uh, inside this particular society. And uh, since this, this plot belongs to you now, you have complete control over it, right? Uh, for example, you can create bedrooms, you can create drawing rooms, you can create bathrooms, kitchen, etc. Right. So you have complete control over this piece of land and it is fully customizable. So I mean, you can do whatever you want to do on this on this land, right. So <clears throat> suppose you have created one bedroom, one private bedroom uh, for yourself, then there's one drawing room as well. Okay. And within this bedroom, you have a safe uh, which is like a box to keep all your money and you have logged it as well using a standard lock. Okay. Then this bedroom has a door. Okay. Uh, which you can use to uh, enter and exit the bedroom. And similarly, this, this drawing room also has a door which you can use to enter and exit the drawing room. And your main house has two main gates or main doors, you can say. Okay. So one door is to be used by you and your family members to go out of the house and enter as well. And there's one more door which you can use for other people or the, the people who uh, come from outside. Okay. Uh, like your guests. So this is uh, just a scenario. Okay. I mean, this is like one of the scenarios that you can have when you build your own house on a piece of land. So, so here in this case, you have two main doors of your house. Okay. And one for yourself and the other one for outsiders. All right. Next is you also have a grocery store just located outside of your society. Okay. So, uh, so uh, this is the scene here in this diagram. And now uh, let's talk about some common scenarios uh, that you might have seen. Okay if you have a house like this. Okay. So the first scenario is suppose some guests are coming over to your place to your house. So they are coming from outside, right? So they'll be using this door, which is meant for outsiders only to enter your house. And then these guests will be redirected to your drawing room. Okay, and not your bedroom. Okay, that is what usually happens when I mean guests arrive, they they usually sit in, in the drawing room. Okay. And then when they leave, they leave this, uh, they, they use the same path to exit your house and your society. Okay, so same is the case here. So the guests have used this door <coughs> here to enter your house. And then after that, they have used uh, this door to enter your uh, drawing room. And then when they left, they used the same path. So they exited using this door and then they used uh, this main door of the house to exit the society. Okay. Then scenario number two is <clears throat> suppose you are sitting in your bedroom. Okay. And you want to buy something from this grocery store located just outside of your society. So what you're going to do, you're going to open this safe, take some money out of it by unlocking the door, I mean, by uh, removing, uh, by remo uh, removing the lock. Okay. And then you're going to go out of this bedroom door first. And then you're going to get out of your main house using this door. Okay, which is meant for you and your family members. And then you're going to go out to this grocery store to buy stuff. And then you can come back using the same path. Okay. So you're going to use the same door to come back or uh, to enter your house and then to enter your bedroom. Okay. Now, uh, one more thing, 
if you are opting for home delivery of the stuff that you want to buy from this grocery store okay just as an example so the delivery person also if he or she is i mean coming to send the goods okay to your house then the entry will be restricted to this door only right so the delivery person cannot enter your house this is what usually happens right so this is the scenario <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> i mean why i took this example of a society or i mean of of a house inside a society because similar things are there in in a vpc also okay so let's just understand how this diagram relates to an actual aws vpc okay the first thing is that i want to explain is why to use vpc i mean what this service is giving to us as as cloud customers okay so first thing is we should we should know i mean what is vpc so vpc is like a portion in the entire aws cloud okay which is a private to you okay so it is a type of a networking section in entire aws okay that is assigned to you to create your resources securely okay so when I mean, why do we want to do that in the first place is the next question okay so uh, when you start creating i mean when you start using aws for the first time okay if you remember from our uh, 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 this past lectures also whenever we have created any ec2 instance okay we have used the default vpc okay if i can show you in aws management console also okay so i am logged into my aws account and if i go to ec2 for example okay i am taking i am taking the example of ec2 but it can be any resource in aws so let it load okay so this is the ec2 uh, landing page so if i am trying to create a resource so suppose uh, when I, uh, i mean uh, i have just created my aws account and this is the first time i am using this aws management console okay the first time i mean I, i don't know anything about it i just want to create a virtual machine because that's the first thing that everyone does when he or she creates an aws account okay so i i want to create my i want to create an ec2 instance or i want to create a virtual machine in aws so i am going to use this ec2 service within this ec2 service i am going to click on launch instances or okay, launch instance button then i'll just name this server something and then if i scroll down okay i mean we don't have to create it but i just want to give you an example why we are using this vpc service in the first place in aws okay if you scroll down you will see a section of network settings okay if i click on edit here you can see this is a required field okay so this is a mandatory field to create an ec2 instance okay and if if i check the drop down list i won't see any other option so there is only one option which is the default vpc option okay so what uh aws does is when you are using aws for the very first time or if you are a beginner in aws okay but you have to create some resources in aws so all those resources are going to need a network i mean where do you want to put this inside this big aws network okay so they have given us a default vpc here which can which can be used by uh, all the customers to create their resources without thinking about the network at all why because it is slightly complicated okay and sometimes it takes time for the customers to understand the vpc concepts okay but since it is it is it is a mandate it is a mandatory field to create most of the resources especially ec2 instances so you can use this default vpc when you are learning aws okay but if you are working for a company okay for an enterprise which want to host their applications or production applications on aws in that case you cannot use this default vpc why because you are not sure of 
the uh, I mean IP address range that this default VPC is using. Okay, who has created it? Who all have access to it? You are not sure. Okay, and this is not the best practice to create your production resources or I mean, production to uh, host your uh, this production applications in in default VPC in AWS. Okay, and this is uh, I mean what uh, AWS says. You can create your own custom VPC, okay, so that you don't have to use their default VPC to host your production grade applications, okay. By doing so, you are using the security in the cloud. So, VPC is the security in the cloud of your resources, okay. So, uh, uh, AWS guarantees that your resources are are fully secure okay uh, when you deploy your resources in your own custom vpc and this is the reason uh, if there is a company okay who has just started using aws to host their applications okay they've uh, just created their aws account and now they want to host their applications the first thing that they're going to do the first or or the second thing maybe is they are going to create their own custom VPC with their own uh, custom IP address range. Okay, so that's like uh, one of the most um, crucial things to do. Okay, before you can actually deploy your main applications. Okay, so this VPC is going to give you your uh, private space in AWS, which you uh, which you can fully customize. Okay. I mean, you can create your resources, you can, I mean, create, uh, uh, I mean, you can restrict the access to your resources. Okay, so it is up to you. Okay. So that is the reason we have to create our own custom VPC, okay, before we can actually deploy our main application. Remember this part, okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to our slide now. Okay, so the diagram that we just learned is a kind of similar to how VPC actually works. Okay, I mean, uh, so how it, it relates to the main VPC terms. <clears throat> so if you can see in the diagram, so let me explain it. Okay, so suppose this whole society is your AWS region in AWS. Okay, why is it so? Because VPC is a regional service which means if I create a VPC in one region and if I change the region, then I won't see that VPC in another region. Okay. So, uh, if you create a VPC in one region, it just stays in that region only. If you, if you change the region, then you won't see that created VPC in other region. Okay. Remember this because this is sometimes asked in the interviews as well. Is VPC a regional service? Yes, it is a regional service. Okay, so this entire society can be considered as one big AWS region in your AWS account. Okay, now within this region, you uh, you have created your VPC. So I'm talking about custom VPCs here. So there are two types of VPCs. Okay, there's a default VPC in each AWS region in your account, which is given by AWS, so that you can start getting other resources without thinking about the network at all. Then there is custom VPC, which you create to deploy your main applications. So I'm talking about a custom VPC here. Okay. So within this AWS region, you can create your VPC, which is going to be completely secure and private to you. And, and then you can create your resources inside this VPC to host your main applications or the uh, enterprise applications. Okay, now once you have created the VPC, so there are some concepts or there are some other resources that you have to create okay, uh, before you can actually deploy your main resources like EC2 instances. So for example, you want to create an EC2 instance in your own custom VPC. The first thing that you have to do, you have to create a, uh, this VPC first in AWS. Then after you create the VPC, you have to create at least one uh, subnet. Okay, now uh, what is the meaning of subnet? So when you create your VPC, you assign some IP address range to this entire VPC. 
okay and that ip address range is is also called cidr range okay cidr i'm going to talk about it in much more detail in later slides but just understand these terms because these terms are often asked in the interviews okay so that ip address range of your entire vpc is called a cider range so cider cidr stands for classless interdomain routing okay don't worry about the full form it's not mandatory but i just wanted to highlight this all right so your a cider range of your entire vpc will be divided into several parts okay means this big network that you have is going to be divided into several parts inside your vpc because uh, i mean you'll be using uh, you know different portions of this network for a different piece of work so it is important to divide this big network of your vpc into small chunks of equal size so these small chunks are called subnets and this process is called uh, subnetting okay i have already created one video on a common networking terms that you should know okay before you start learn to uh, i mean before you start to learn aws uh, i'm going to give you the description i mean the url of that uh, video in, in the description of this video so you can check that out anyways so uh, this is the concept of subnetting so after you create your vpc you have to create at least one subnet okay and then you can use this subnet to deploy your resources inside this uh, subnet why and this subnet is required because uh, this subnet is, is going to give ip address to your resources so if you are getting an ec2 inst instance for example this ec2 instance would need an uh, ip address right so to assign this ip address to this ec2 instance you have to create a subnet first so after you have created your uh, subnet then you can create your ec2 instances okay and this ec2 uh, this ec2 instance that you have created is going to get one free ip from the same subnet in which you have launched it okay now let's see this this diagram in much more detail to relate to the previous diagram so here if you see i have a private subnet and I, and i and i have a public subnet okay so this this bedroom is like a private subnet okay why because the meaning of this private subnet is nobody from outside or internet can enter can enter your the private subnet resources okay that is why it is it is called private okay and that is why i referred it to uh, i mean i referred to it as bedroom okay then there is this public subnet the meaning of this public subnet is the resources which are inside this subnet can actually reach internet or outside and someone from outside can actually initiate connections to resources inside your public subnet so that is why it is called public subnet okay now within this uh, private subnet you have this safe okay which you use to keep all your money okay treat this as some a critical application or application data hosted on ec2 instance so this ec2 instance is uh, launched in a private subnet so it has some critical data that should be private always okay so you have used a lock to lock the to lock your application okay or or we can say uh, you are trying to control the traffic to and fro from this ec2 instance so this lock can be referred to as security group okay now uh, again i have created one video on ec2 instances in which i have discussed the core concepts of security groups also so please go and and uh, i mean watch that video as well to understand the concept of security groups in much more detail but anyways i am going to i mean cover that here as well so the meaning of security group is it acts like a virtual firewall to your ec2 instance okay the meaning of this virtual firewall is it is going to control all the inbound and outbound traffic from this ec2 instance to the outside world okay 
so there are some uh, set of security group rules uh, that you have to maintain to allow or to uh, i mean uh, allow uh, some particular type of traffic to your ec2 instance okay then if you see this uh, i mean on, on the subnet there's a lock i mean uh, there's a door which is there this door can be referred to as nacl nacl stands for network access control list so this is again a type of a firewall as well but the main difference between the security group and nacl is nacl works on the subnet level which means all the resources that you deploy inside this this private subnet the traffic to and and fro uh, from this uh, subnet resources is going to be controlled by this single nacl firewall so it works on the subnet level and the security group it only works on the instance level to which it is attached okay so so it can only control the traffic of the instances to which it is attached but but this nacl can control the traffic of this entire subnet okay leaving the subnet and entering the subnet the traffic that leaves the subnet and enters the subnet is controlled by nacl of the subnet to which it is attached okay similarly you have this uh, this public subnet here and you have one more nacl okay so uh, this nacl controls all the traffic to this subnet to and fro okay incoming and outgoing right now let's talk about internet gateway internet gateway is a resource that you attach to your vpc and we can only attach one internet gateway to one vpc at a time remember this it is it is also asked in the interviews okay how many internet gateways you can attach to your vpc only one why is it so because internet gateway is a highly available resource i mean uh, you don't have to get multiple internet gateways okay so it is a highly available highly scalable resource it is completely managed by aws we don't have to worry about it at all we just need to create it and attach it to our uh, vpc and we are done we don't have to worry about anything else after that all is being managed by aws behind the scenes and it never fails okay i mean i i, I mean i have never seen it fail in my 6 years of experience all right so this internet gateway the job of this internet gateway is whatever resources you have in your public subnet if they need to go out to the internet i mean if they need to connect to the outside internet outside of your vpc so this internet gateway is going to allow that type of traffic so from here to here and then to outside internet it is allowed okay and if someone wants to initiate a connection from internet to your resources in your public subnet that also is allowed by internet gateway okay so so so, so suppose i have an ec2 instance in this public subnet and i want to ssh into it from my laptop so if i have an internet gateway attached okay and i have uh, the uh, an entry in my route table of this vpc wherein i am uh, uh, along the traffic through this internet gateway okay i'll, I'll talk about uh, this route tables also okay but just understand that i mean whatever uh, i mean whatever rules you want to have for your vpc all those rules are maintained in a routing table okay i i'm going to cover that in the later slides but since we are talking about this internet gateway and how this type of connectivity works so i want you to highlight this here so you should have an internet gateway attached to your vpc and there should be an an uh, uh, entry in the route table of the vpc where it, it says that the traffic to other to the outside world to internet is allowed via internet gateway if you have these two things then people from uh uh outside can enter the vpc and then connect to your resources in your public subnet and the resources in in your public subnet can go out to the internet using internet gateway okay now what is the concept of net gateway okay so a net gateway does not allow any incoming connection from internet to your resources in your private subnet okay it only allows so uh, once again it is like a gateway okay that you can attach to your vpc and this gateway allows 
द रिसोर्स इन योर प्राइवेट सबनेट टू कनेक्ट टू इंटरनेट ओके बट इट डज नॉट अलाउ द ट्रैफिक फ्रॉम इंटरनेट टू योर दिस प्राइवेट सबनेट सो दिस टाइप ऑफ ट्रैफिक इज नॉट अलाउड सो इट इज इट इज ओनली वन डायरेक्शन यू कैन से और यू कैन से इट इज ओनली आउट बाउंड ओनली इट अलाउज ओनली आउट बाउंड कनेक्शन फ्रॉम योर प्राइवेट सबनेट टू इंटरनेट सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन नेट गेट वे एंड इंटरनेट गेट वे ओके सो मीन इफ यू हैव सम प्राइवेट रिसोर्स इन अ प्राइवेट सबनेट एंड इफ दोज रिसोर्स वॉन्ट टू कनेक्ट टू इंटरनेट देन यू कैन यूज अ नेट गेट वे रिसोर्स इफ यू हैव सम रिसोर्स इन योर इन योर पब्लिक सबनेट विच wants to talk to internet for anything or someone wants to initiate a connection from internet to your resources in your public subnet then we can use internet gateway so this internet gateway is bidirectional i mean it it, it is able to allow the bidirectional traffic but net gateway only allows outbound only traffic i hope the concept is clear to you okay so i mean this is how we were able to relate this diagram to the main vpc terms okay so now uh, i mean whatever we have learned about vpc so a vpc is like a portion in aws cloud where logically you can define your own network to create your resources right i think this is straight forward now you can control all network resources like ip address subnets route tables gateways internet gateways and net gateways etc which we just spoke about vpcs are fully customizable create your own security groups you can create your own nacls route tables etc okay one more thing each subnet that you create within your vpc is going to be in one availability zone only okay the one subnet will will always be in one az but one az can have multiple subnets remember this once again it is really important for from uh, interview point of view all right next so this is uh, a sample vpc diagram if you try to find out some vpc diagrams on aws documentation so this is one of the doc, uh, the diagram that you can find there so if you see in this diagram once again inside our vpc we have one public subnet and we have one private subnet and as, as i just mentioned each each public subnet will be in one availability zone okay so this public subnet is in availability zone a and this private subnet is in availability zone b okay this private subnet has one db server ec2 which means it has a database server hosted on ec2 service now remember this your database servers will always be in private subnet okay database is a very critical thing it has your main data of your of the application and it has to be private in all cases so the database servers are always deployed in private subnets okay now if this database server <clears throat> okay needs to download a package from internet okay how will the the traffic flow since we are using this nat gateway here inside our vpc okay the traffic can go out to uh, this nat gateway and then this nat gateway is going to throw the traffic to the internet gateway to go outside okay remember this concept also i think i did not cover it in our diagram so here if you see the traffic actually flows like this let me just copy it from here and go to this ms paint so remember this when you are using this nat gateway so since a nat gateway we, uh, okay so remember this since you are using this nat gateway resource okay and this nat gateway resource is used to provide internet access to resources in your private subnet okay so this uh, nat gateway will always be deployed in a uh, public subnet okay remember this i mean i'm i'm going to show it to you as well in the practical when i'm trying to create a custom vpc from scratch but just remember this part that uh, net gateways are always deployed in 
the public subnets okay i'm talking about the uh, the public net gateways okay uh, there's a concept of a private net gateway also but that is like an uh, advanced vpc topic so i don't i don't want to go there but just understand that the default net gateway which is the public net gateway is always deployed in a public subnet okay and when you are using this uh, net gateway this net gateway uses the internet gateway to work okay how the traffic flows let me just draw it so the traffic is going to flow so for example this ec2 instance uh, want to download something from internet so it has to use this this uh, net gateway resource so the traffic is going to flow like this it's going to go out of this nacl okay from nacl to a net gateway and from a net gateway to internet gateway and from internet gateway to outside so net gateway uses internet gateway for its function remember this part also okay so your vpc should have an internet gateway and a net gateway as well okay for everything to work all right let's go back to our slide okay so um so so i mean we were talking about this this diagram here so you have this uh, ec2 uh database server which wants to download something from internet so since we have this net gateway deployed in in this public subnet it can go through this this net gateway and then from internet gateway to outside internet then download the thing the stuff and then the traffic can come back via the same way to the this this database server hosted on ec2 okay similarly in in your in your public subnet you have a web server ec2 which means you can access this resource from outside since it is deployed in this public subnet okay so this is a web server uh, which means it's a public facing website hosted on this ec2 instance okay once again since we have internet gateway attached so i mean we can connect to this uh, this web server from outside or from internet okay and each uh, subnet is always located in one availability zone only as you can see here okay so this availability zone has uh, this public subnet and this availability zone b has this private subnet so this is like a sample vpc diagram the most basic diagram of a vpc that you can see all right next so once again i want to uh, just i mean highlight these terms that are really important from interview point of view so these things are often asked in the interview so i wanted to cover uh, all this okay so i mean you can refer to this ppt as well so just before you uh, appear for an interview so you can refer to this slide especially to this slide okay to refresh your vpc concepts all right so what is a custom vpc it's a logically isolated virtual network that you control okay just like you would have in your own data center as i mentioned it is like the personal networking space in aws that you can use to create your resources and and you have full control over uh, all the resources that you create inside your custom vpc then what are subnets there are two types of subnets okay public subnet and private subnet so when a big network ip address range which is called cider range as i mentioned earlier also assigned to your custom vpc is divided into small networks of equal size okay so a big ip address range or a big network is divided into small networks of equal size these small networks are called subnets okay and before you can deploy your resources you need to create subnets at least one subnet should be there inside your vpc so just after you create your vpc create a subnet and then you can create your resources okay and then those resources can get ip address from the subnets which you have created inside your vpc and always uh, uh, one subnet is always in one availability zone then if a subnet is associated with a route table that has a route to an internet gateway it's known as a public subnet as i mentioned here also right so if you have a route table here 
okay i mean I, i'm going to show it to you in aws but just assume that there's a route table somewhere here which maintains the route using this internet gateway to go out to internet so if this if this web server has to connect to internet that route table will have the route that uh, the traffic can go out using the internet gateway okay all right so if a subnet is associated with a route table that has a route to an internet gateway it's known as a public subnet okay so <clears throat> remember another concept that each subnet will be associated with a route table also so the route table to which a subnet is associated with okay that route table should have a route mentioned for an internet gateway which means if any resource in this subnet okay wants to go out to internet then that route table to which this subnet is associated to should have an entry that you can go out to internet via the internet gateway so these type of subnets are called public subnets similarly if a subnet is associated with a route table that does not have this type of route in the route table then it's called a private subnet okay i think this is also pretty simple to understand now then what are route tables it is a resource that you create to determine where network traffic from your subnets or gateway is directed to okay so route tables are like the uh, like the place where you actually have your route written somewhere mentioned so route tables maintain the record of all the routes that are available in your vpc okay so it's called a route table then internet gateway it enables resources in your public subnets such as ec2 instances to connect to the internet if the resource that want to connect has a public ip address of course right the resource that you want to connect to internet it should have a public ip address only then it can connect to internet similarly resources on the internet can initiate a connection to resources in your subnet using the public ip address which means from outside so if if i want to connect to this web server ec2 from here from outside of vpc if i copy this diagram again to this paint So let's go back to our slide and try to understand the concepts. Internet gateways it enables resources in your public subnet to connect to the internet. If the resource has a public IP address, the meaning of this is so this is the resource, this EC2 instance. It is it is in the uh, the public subnet. If it wants to talk to internet, it has to go through internet gateway. So internet gateway is the resource which enables this type of traffic. from here to here and from here to internet so so this type of traffic is allowed via internet gateway so this is what it says here okay in the first line then similarly resources on the internet can initiate a connection to resources in your subnet using the public ip address which means the other way around so if if i if i want to initiate an ssh connection to this web server so for example this is a linux ec2 instance just assume and i want to ssh to this ec2 instance from my laptop which is outside of this network right so this type of traffic is also allowed via internet gateway so this is what the meaning of the other line also for example an internet gateway enables you to connect to an ec2 instance in aws using a local computer okay then one more uh, important concept one internet gateway attaches to one vpc at a time okay and internet gateways are highly available and scalable as well so you don't have to create multiple internet gateways in your vpc you, you, you just need one internet gateway and that is more than sufficient then nat gateway you can use a nat gateway so that instances in in a private subnet can connect to services outside your vpc but external services cannot initiate a connection with those instances once again i'll go back to this and if i have to explain the concept of <clears throat> this nat gateway so uh, if you have this this database server in a private subnet and if it wants to connect to internet 
for any reason okay then the traffic is going to flow via the net gateway so the traffic is going to flow like this and from here to internet gateway and then to outside if you don't have this internet gateway then you cannot initiate a connection from inside of your private subnet to internet okay so you need a net gateway for that but net gateway is not going to allow this type of connection so for example i want to connect to this 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 database server in the private submit from a from a laptop like this like this so this is not allowed by net gateway okay so it is only for outbound only connections so this is the meaning of net gateway here okay then one more important thing to improve resiliency the best practices say that you should create a NAT gateway in each availability zone. So, uh, I mean, if, if you want to, I mean, if, if, if you are working with multiple availability zones and you need high availability of your NAT gateways, it is important that you create one NAT gateway in each availability zone in your VPC. Remember this concept. Once again, it is really important from interview point of view. Okay. So, a NAT gateways are redundant only inside an availability zone okay so you have to create a, a multiple net gateways if you are using multiple availability zones okay then you cannot associate a security group with a net gateway okay you cannot associate a security group with a net gateway okay it's not possible all right so this is about the important vpc concepts the core concepts i can say then next is nacl or network access control list so once again i want to talk about it in much more detail i mean i've already spoken about security group concepts in deep in my video on ec2 instances so you can refer for for security group concepts in that video but i i did not cover the concept of nacl there so i want to cover it here in this video so nacl allows or denies specific inbound or outbound traffic at the subnet level okay which i already told you so in this diagram if you see there's this uh, this uh, subnet is there and uh, there's one nacl attached to it so all the resources for example you have multiple ec2 instances in this subnet okay so the uh, uh, incoming and outgoing traffic to all the ec2 instances will be controlled via nacl rules Okay, so this is the, the difference between NACL and security group. Security group only uh, controls the traffic to an instance to which it is attached to. Then each inbound and outbound rule has a number from 1 to uh, 32,766 evaluated in order starting with the lowest number. Now, what is the meaning of this? L let me go to my AWS management console and explain this concept to you in detail. So uh, to reach NACL, I have to go to VPC service first. So in the search box, you can type VPC. And you can just click on VPC service. It's going to uh, land you to the default VPC dashboard. On, on the left hand side, you can see there are many resources so you have to go to security section and click on network acls and there's one default acl which is all always available from the default vpc okay i'm going to cover the concept of default vpcs as well so uh, here you can click on this network acl id and this is how an nacl looks okay so the meaning of this line that it works using the rule numbers and always the lowest numbered rule is prioritized or followed by the NACL. Meaning of this is, for example, I create one inbound rule here. And I'm going to keep the number of this rule as 200. And what I want to do, I want to deny all the traffic. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to deny all the traffic save changes so now in my nacl i have two rules on the inbound i have one rule that is allowing everything and other rule is denying everything but nacl always followed the i mean uh, 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 always follows the lowest numbered rule first so here if you see 
this 100 rule number is the lowest rule, uh, this rule number so it will be followed first so uh, this rule has no significance here since the lower the uh, lower numbered rule is allowing everything so it will be allowed so this is how nacl works okay and it uh, these are stateless so whatever you allow on the inbound you have to allow specifically on outbound also all right so this is the meaning of this second point on nacl then they are stateless as i mentioned which means that information about previously sent or received traffic is not saved so so you have to allow both the inbound and the return traffic in your nacl rules else it will not work because these are stateless so they do not store any previously sent or received traffic okay uh, if you compare it with a security group the security groups are stateful in nature so you don't have to uh, specify the return traffic it is allowed by default but uh, not in the case of NACA then it can allow and block traffic as well which means if you want to block some specific IP address or IP address ranges you have the option with NACL okay but not with the security groups so security groups cannot deny a particular IP address or IP address ranges it can only have allow rules but NACL has both allow and deny rules remember this all right in the next slide there is a comparison once again it is very important from interview point of view it is often asked in the interviews what is the difference between a security group and NACL so these are the differences Security groups operates at the instance level, NACLs operate at the subnet level. Security groups applies to an instance only if it is associated with the instance, then NACLs applies to all instances deployed in the associated subnet. Okay, so uh, NACL provides an additional layer of defense if security group rules are too permissive. Okay, I'm going to talk about it. In, in much more uh, uh, detail in the next video okay but just understand the differences right now that say, uh, these security groups they uh, just control the traffic of instance to which it, to which it is attached nacl control the traffic of the, of the entire subnet to, be, to, be, to which it is associated then it supports allow rules only security groups nacls have option of allow and deny rules Security groups evaluates all rules before deciding whether to allow traffic or not. But in case of NACL, it's going to evaluate the rules in order of rule number. Okay, starting with the lowest numbered rule when deciding whether to allow traffic or not, as we just saw in the AWS management console. Then security groups are stateful in nature, so return traffic is allowed regardless of the rules. But NACLs are stateless. Return traffic must be explicitly allowed by the rules. I hope the differences are clear so they both are like virtual firewalls but they are when I mean, they have a different characteristics all right so that's all i wanted to cover in this video actually so this was like a theoretical part on vpc and and, and, and its concepts but in the next video i'm going to create a whole uh, a whole new custom vpc from scratch okay and what I'm going to create, I'm going to create this VPC architecture. So this is a custom VPC architecture and it covers all the basic concepts of a custom VPC. Okay, so don't get uh, scared just by seeing this, this diagram. I'm going to explain to you every detail that is possible. Okay, and I'm, and I'm going to ensure that this diagram is painted in your memory after that video. Okay, so I'm going to create this in AWS Management Console and I'm going to describe each step of this, this uh, diagram creation in AWS. Okay, so that you can understand each and everything that happens inside a VPC. All right, so stay, stay tuned for that video. All right, guys, uh, 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 that is all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you liked my video. If you did, uh, please hit that like button and uh, share this video with others and please subscribe to my channel. Alright, I'm going to end the video now and I'm going to see you in the next one.